I'm Gina Ryan, Director of Hardin County Educational and Community Television, and welcome to EC3 HOSA Medical Moments. Uh, this month, we're going to feature topics that involve your children in regards to immunizations, vaccines, and just a little bit of everything that you need to know as a parent, but also as an adult in this time of year when it comes to some of those things like flu and uh, possibly whooping cough and some other things such as that. So joining me are two uh, young persons who are from two organizations that we work with really close in the school systems and such. And we have Melissa Phillips and she's with the uh, District Health Department. She'll review those things where she covers and then Erin Pretty who is with Baptist Health Harden. So Melissa, first for you, many people know who you are because of this particular show, but for our audience, tell them a little bit about your role and, and some of the services that the health department provides. So I serve as our public information officer, and in that role, I deal with our media partners, I handle our website, our social media platforms, um, and a lot of what we're covering right now is um, respiratory health, so flu, COVID, and things like that. And the, the health department, what counties do you serve? So we are a six county district, and that is Hardin, LaRue, Meade, Marion, Nelson, and Washington. <laughs> okay, Erin Pretty, you are new to Baptist Health Heart or new to your role? I'm new to my role at Baptist Health Heart. I've been with Baptist Health for about three years, but I serve as the manager for community health and wellness. Um, and we act as going out into the community and offering education in the schools. We offer vaccinations and health screenings in businesses and industries, and also serve with some of our patients that are have low access to care with um, setting up with Feeding America and uh, warm blessings and offering health screenings to those individuals as well. Do you all have any upcoming, I know that, that the, the health department has done some things in the past um, such as vaping and things like that, so do you all have anything scheduled that individuals might want to attend? In the upcoming weeks We're getting ready to start a big vaping um, series with Hardin County Schools um, and hitting all of the eighth graders um, in the middle schools. So we actually start our first session this week. Um, and when you talk about vaping, you talk about respiratory issues. Let's go down. I mean, that is very much a serious problem with vaping. So keep us up to date and we'll try to videotape that and also show the, the community because it is so important. Uh, Melissa, at Talk initially about the immunizations that babies need and where can they get those and the whys. So the why is because baby does not have a strong immune system from birth. So that's why there is um, a series of recommended vaccinations um, and those are set on a schedule and moms uh, and dads can work with their pediatrician, um, the health department is also a provider, the hospital. So there's different ways they can, can stay on schedule with that. And it is very important that they do stay on that schedule to get those kiddos ready when they're ready to enter school. You know, with COVID in place now, now we're in post, we're still in COVID mode, but um, I was, were the immunization numbers dropping because people couldn't get out and that type of thing? Or was that still something primarily at the hospital, Erin, that was it automatic that you all would remind parents of that type of thing? Well, anytime any patient comes in the hospital, whether they're pediatric or adult, we're gonna remind them of the upcoming vaccinations that they need. Um, more so along the pedi pediatric side. I mean, once a baby is born, obviously they're given that information at discharge as far as making sure that they have a pediatrician, making sure they're up to date with when the babies need to have vaccinations. Okay. Um, we talked briefly before talking about the Tdap. What is that immunization and um, 
some of the, the fallout from that, not yes. having it. So Tdap is for adults, and that is a combo vaccination. That is your tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. And pertussis is another name for whooping cough, which in our area has been a serious problem for several years now. It just doesn't get a lot of um, voice because we've had so many other issues like COVID um, that have had a louder voice. <laughs> but it is very um, dangerous for babies. So that's one that's going to be recommended for new parents and any other loved ones that are going to be around that new baby. Now, we, do you want to share yours, Erin, in regards to um, um, you, you got the Tdap not too long ago? Correct? Well, I mean, my son's 11, but when it, we did get the Tdap, both my husband and I, prior to my son being born, just to protect him. Now, we did not ask for other loved ones, but I do know that that is something that's strongly recommended. So... See, when you mentioned that, it's a little bit like I had no idea that I need to be responsible in terms of getting that when you're around infants and things. And, and of course, this is we're coming to the end of festival season. <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking about, you know, the babies are out and about, and, and we tend to uh, snuggle. <laughs> and such. So, so it is important. So basically, uh, if you're an adult and you're going to be in the presence of infants, um, it's a good idea to possibly get that. Uh, that shot. Absolutely, and, and kind of like we mentioned, our instinct with babies is to put them right here on our shoulder, mm -hmm. which is right there by our, our faces. So any of those respiratory illnesses, we would transmit directly to baby. So any of those protections that you can get um, until baby has their own immune system is just a good idea. Um, another thing that we discussed was RSV. So. Tell me what it is and how people contract it. So RSV is just a highly um, contagious respiratory virus. We see it more in infants. I mean, really anybody can get it, but the babies are the ones that tend to have the most side effects and the most complications from it. Um, and I know currently there's a high increase in admissions to the hospital and into the ERs with patients or babies that have RSV. Now. How does it present itself? Is it flu-like? Is it COVID-like symptoms? What does RSV look like in infants? It looks like a cold slash flu. I mean, you'll notice they can be congested, but the big thing that you have to watch with these babies is their breathing. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that they start breathing very rapidly and they're using a lot of their accessory muscles when they breathe. Um, and that's one thing you can notice in their chest and in their stomach, they have what we call retractions which you can tell when they're breathing um, that they're really struggling. Um, how dangerous is it? I mean, it can be highly dangerous. I mean, babies are going in, some can require high levels of oxygen, um, even to a point of needing to be on a breathing machine um, to help their breathing. So it is highly dangerous. I mean, babies that are on high levels of oxygen, if they get on a high level of oxygen, they're still needing to, whether it's nurse from a mother or take a bottle, they can't do that because they can't eat and breathe at the same time. So you're seeing those babies in the hospitals on high oxygen, plus having feeding tubes because they're not able to take a bottle and or nurse from the mother. So with RSV, that is something that if you are following your well baby checks and such, that pediatricians can kind of keep their, their eye on that child as well? Well, I mean, I think with, an, with RSV, it's more of, um, not necessarily the well baby checks because it's just going to be like any other illness. Yeah. I mean, you can go to your well baby check and nothing can be wrong. And then two weeks later, you're spiking a temp, you're having some congestion, you know, you're noticing, you know, coughing, you know, wheezes, you know, anything like that. But it would have nothing to do with the well baby checks. I mean, well baby checks, yes, you need to get them, but they're not going to prevent necessarily RSV. Let's talk about immunizations in terms of where we can get those. I know, Melissa, you were saying you can, you can do this and this and this, and you also said Baptist Health. Um, with the immunizations, what do students need to get into school? Do you recall that, Melissa? So those requirements are set by the school. Um, that's not, there's not a state requirement on what vaccinations that a student has to have to enter school. Um, that's set at the, the education level. And um, the nurses there at the schools typically review those because they have to submit that immunization certificate to make sure that they have all the required immunizations to enter school. Do we have a high number of, of adults that 
need those immunizations, you know, after the fact of there's an outbreak of chicken pox, not, you know, a, a few years ago and things like that. Can adults get a booster or anything with some of those common Some of common? those vaccines, uh, they have changed the schedule. Um, adults require boosters for some things, like chicken pox is handled totally different than when I got my chicken pox immunizations when I was a kid. So yeah, we do change things as time goes on. We learn more um, and we do different things. Let's go where COVID is. What, <laughs> what is available, where to get it, and the ages. So we'll start with you. Melissa. So we can go all the way down to six months with COVID vaccination now. Um, there are multiple brands. It's not just one or two anymore of vaccine that are out there. And the best recommendation we have for COVID now is get the highest level of vaccination that's appropriate for you because the rules are just a little bit different because everybody's a little bit different, you know, whether it's your age, your health status, it kind of depends on what you need. So that is the latest recommendation, you know, get, get what you need. Um, but the latest and greatest news is we do have that new bivalent booster shot, mm -hmm. which covers the Omicron variants, which have been, you know, the most prevalent recently. We discussed that the idea of if you get your flu shot and a COVID booster, you may have a little bit, at the same time, you may have a little bit of a not feel as well. Is that something, Erin, that you've seen? Yes, I mean, typically with the flu vaccination, you don't see too much of a reaction um, to it as far as feeling bad. You might have a little bit of decreased energy. But I know with the COVID, a lot of people have seen, and I myself, when I got it, I mean, you do feel, I did run a low grade temp with mine, so that is always the possibility. Um, so getting those together may really knock you down for a couple of days. Flu is very prevalent at this time, um, an outbreak, and Melissa, share what information you have about the flu. So the past two years, we've really not had a flu season because we've had all of the different COVID mitigation steps. We were masking, we were keeping our distance from other people, we were staying home a lot more, but folks are not doing that like they were in the past two years. So we anticipate this is going to be an atypical flu season. Um, we expect to see a lot of cases. And typically flu vaccination starts in October. So uh, if you haven't gotten your flu shot, now's the time to do it especially if you do have those plans to gather with family for Thanksgiving. Um, this would give you that immunity before you gather with a family, which a lot of times is older and has uh, you know, more complications with their health. So um, do we wanna talk about some of those mitigation efforts? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. So, you know, masking works. You know, we proved that when we did not have a flu season last year. If you're going to be around others with compromised health or you're gonna be in close quarters with other people, consider wearing your mask. Um, physical distancing works. Um, personally, it's just become my new norm. You know, I don't wanna be really close to folks in the grocery store. I don't wanna be in crowded environments. Um, it, it, you know, like I said, it's become a norm for me and I think that's happened for a lot of other people too. Um, maybe take things outside when the weather's nice because these respiratory illnesses like flu and COVID don't spread as easily outdoors. It's, they need that close contact. So, you know, washing your hands frequently. All those things that worked during COVID also work for all these other respiratory illnesses like flu. With the flu, you know, I have heard before that if you do get the flu shot, it may be a different, you may still catch a different type of flu. Is that correct? And well, I think the biggest thing to remember is that the vaccine isn't going to completely prevent you from getting the flu. What it's going to do is lessen those symptoms. And whether you get flu A or flu B, the flu vaccine is looking to lessen those. So you have to think, yes, I don't feel good, but how bad would I feel had I not gotten the flu vaccination? And I think one other thing to talk about with the flu vaccine is there's a lot of um, confusion and people think that if they get the vaccination that they're gonna get the flu. 
Well, what they don't realize is that the flu vaccine is not a live vaccine. The shot that we give is not a live vaccination. Um, so you're not gonna get the flu from the vaccine. You might have what we call an immune response, which is where you feel run down, um, tired, maybe a little achy, but it's not the flu. Age levels for flu shots. Any and all? <laughs> Six months and up. Yes. Mm -hmm. And encouraged for pregnant moms as well. Mm -hmm. To do that as well. Awesome. Okay, uh, with the weather changing, like you mentioned before, we're going to be in more indoors, close, close um, together, that type of thing. Anything else we need to worry about with or consider uh, for prevention? Flu shot, get that. COVID booster, get that. Wear your mask if you're going to be in large groups, hopefully, indoors mm -hmm. specifically. Um, hand sanitizer, which it's not going out in style. <laughs> Please keep that with you at all times. And um, did, I, did, we, did I miss one of the others or any other tips? Well, I think some of the other tips that you can do are simple, um, making sure that you're getting enough rest, making sure that you're eating enough fruits, vegetables, um, and, drinking. Staying, and drinking hydration. water, yeah. hydration, um, getting exercise. Just trying to live a healthy lifestyle is automatically going to boost your immune system. So really kind of focusing on those is going to help also. And another thing, if you're sick, no matter what it is, please stay home. Exactly. <laughs> yes, yeah. you know, that's a good thing. <laughs> adults in the workplace, you know, kiddos in the school setting, you know, because there are so many different illnesses this time of year, please don't bring those with you, you know, into your personal environment. So stay home if you're sick. Erin, is there something you'd like to add that we did not touch in this particular program? I don't think so. I think just the biggest thing is get vaccinated, um, whatever it is, whether it's flu or COVID. Just get the vaccination. Make sure you're focusing on rest, good hydration, good hand hygiene, all of that to help prevent. Mm -hmm. And Melissa? No, I, I think we hit the high points. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't say the word vaccination enough. Um, and you know, do some planning with that. Like I said, if you get vaccinated now, you'll be covered for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Or you know, if you wanna wait, make sure you're covered for Christmas. We really do wanna protect the most fragile, you know, our, our babies and our seniors, especially this time of year, like you said, when we're all inside, um, where these viruses spread easily. Well, thank you for both of you coming in today and, and providing our audience with some really worthwhile information. Uh, if people would like additional information about Baptist Health and also the health department, uh, share that information, Melissa. So we are on all of the socials and our website is ltdhd.org. Okay, and Erin? And Baptist is on all of the socials as well. And then again, you can get on the website at baptisthealth.com. Great. And again, thank you all. And stay healthy. <laughs> and I'm going to probably leave and get my flu shot today. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and thank you all for joining us for this edition of EC3 HOSA Medical Moments.